She had gambling debts to pay off, so she became the female Tinder swindler. Then there's the woman who scammed her own supposed best friend with an imaginary uncle. Let's get right into the worst of the romance scammers. Number four, off base. Florence Massau and Mark Arom Akuo from Canton, Massachusetts were caught defrauding people out of millions through elaborate romance scams. Four other people were involved in the scam, including four Nigerian nationals. Still, Musao and Okuo were the ringleaders and scammed their victims out of more than $1.3 million. Musao used fake identities to create profiles on dating apps and social media platforms. She used these aliases to find victims and lie to them about her romantic intentions. Then she swindled them out of thousands of dollars when they fell for it. She had fake passports made with the names Precious Adams and Catherine Mutoki to open bank accounts in the Boston area where her victims could deposit the funds. Musao's accomplices told their victims to deposit their money into her accounts. She would then withdraw the money in amounts less than $10,000 to avoid suspicion. In 2018, one of the six conspirators found a victim online and told her he was a member of the U.S. military deployed in the Middle East. He sweet-talked the woman into sending $20,000 into a Santander bank account so he could retire early and come live with her in the United States. Kuo took the same approach in his scamming. He often claimed to be a U.S. soldier in the Middle East or Africa. As the online romance with his victims developed, he claimed he was desperate to leave the military and come home, but he needed money first. In one case, a woman transferred $137,000 to an account controlled by Musao and Okuo so that Okuo could claim retirement benefits early and return to marry her. In another case, he told a woman from Georgia that he worked in the oil industry in Kuwait. However, he was in love with her and needed $4,700 to be with her in the U.S. The woman quickly wired the money to him. In 2020, Musao told a man that she was working at a United Nations refugee camp in the Middle East and wanted to come to the U.S. to start a new life with him. The victim sent her $7,800 to help her move out of the Middle East. But of course, these digital romances never materialized. Of the $1.3 million stolen, most came from romance scams, and another $20,000 came from pandemic unemployment claims. The scammers used the names of unsuspecting Massachusetts residents who were still employed and had never applied oh, for benefits. Man. Musao and Okuo were arrested on March 22, 2021. Musao pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud, carrying a maximum sentence of 30 years. Assistant U.S. Attorney Ian Stearns offered a plea deal that would put Musao behind bars for four to five years. Musao also forfeited $350,000 in stolen funds in addition to her 2013 Lexus sedan. Number three, words with scammers. When a widowed woman decided to pass some time on the Words with Friends mobile app, she had no idea she would be scammed out of nearly $34,000. Words with Friends is a mobile game similar to Scrabble, where you can play with your friends or random strangers as you put tiles down and play words that get you the most points. It seems relatively harmless until people with ulterior motives are matched with lonely, vulnerable players. The widowed woman from Tennessee, we'll call her Sarah, decided to download Words with Friends after her husband died earlier that year. She started playing against a man who said his name was Garth Davis, and they used the game's chat feature to get to know one another. Eventually, the friendly competition evolved into a romantic relationship. They moved the conversation to Google Hangouts where they confided in one another. Then, Garth told Sarah that he was having financial issues. He said he was a project manager on an oil rig off the coast of Ireland and couldn't access his bank account. He begged Sarah for help via cash and gift cards. She sent him thousands of dollars. A few months later, Sarah broke her foot, which made it difficult to go out and buy the gift cards for him. So he offered another option. She could send the money via wire transfers to his friend, Carla Whaley. Sarah sent him $20,000 in cash and another $3,000 through Cash App. But by July, Sarah grew suspicious and called the police. Fearing that Sarah was catfished, the cops went to Whaley's home to find this mysterious Garth Davis. 
but Whaley denied knowing anyone named Garth Davis. She admitted to the police that she was helping a friend move money, but wouldn't tell them who that friend was because she wasn't a rat. A few months later, police brought Whaley in for more questioning. She confessed to lying and said she received $20,000 from Sarah. Police looked at Whaley's Cash App transactions and saw that she received the money, exchanged it for cryptocurrency, and then sold it for cash. Between July and August, she transferred more than $10,000 to her personal bank account. There was no Garth Davis. It had been Carla Whaley the whole time. Not only was the widowed Sarah swindled out of thousands of dollars, but she was emotionally manipulated at one of the loneliest times in her life. Whaley was arrested in her home and brought to jail. She was charged with one count of fraudulent schemes and one count of financing a criminal syndicate. The lead detective on the case, Gary Kidder, said, This is a common scam, and they're not just limited to dating apps. There are a lot of warning signs to look for if you think you or someone you know may be on the verge of getting scammed. Scammers usually begin the chat by saying that they are out of the country for some reason, like work, the military, or family. This creates distance between them and the victim. Then they'll work on establishing trust before coming up with a medical problem or business emergency that leaves them desperate for money. Many victims feel a sense of loyalty and send the money, especially after chatting with the scammers for a while. But be warned, scammers are never finished asking for money. Once you send it, they'll ask again and again. If you see a loved one talking to someone online asking for money, ask how they met that person in the first place. In 2019, an estimated 25,000 people lost $201 million to romance scams. The average victim lost $2,600 each. Victims over the age of 70 lost an average of $10,000 or more. Number two, my best friend. Susan and Anna met while working at an assisted living facility. It started when Susan lent Anna a hair tie to keep her hair out of her client's food. They became fast friends and started going to nightclubs and on vacations together. But their friendship was built on lies. Anna said she was one of three triplets, two girls and a boy, but her brother died, so her biological parents put baby Anna and her sister in a plastic bag in the middle of Liverpool. Susan felt horrible for her sob story. The lies got worse when Susan said she had a crush on a nightclub bouncer named Stee. Anna quickly turned around and said that that Stee was her uncle. Susan lost touch with Stee one day, eight years later, long after the club closed down. Stee called her to say he owned a business in Las Vegas and wanted a camcorder for Christmas, but his cousin Anna wouldn't get him one. He asked Susan to buy one for him. Susan didn't think this was strange because she had been getting updates from Anna about Stee over the years. Anna said Stee was recently married and divorced and had two children since he last saw Susan at the club. Things took an intense turn when Anna told Susan that Stee needed money for cancer treatment in the United States. Apparently, he was participating in experimental treatment in Maryland and Anna couldn't cover the cost herself. So Susan agreed to cover half of it. It started at 1,000 pounds per month and started increasing over time. Two years into the cancer scheme, Steen needed money to buy an apartment attached to the hospital for 450 pounds per month. Susan found herself in a mounting debt she couldn't climb out of. She worked as many shifts as she could to cover Steve's treatment costs, especially since he promised a future with her once he recovered. Then, Anna's lies came crashing down. Susan realized Anna was lying when she saw her son's location wasn't in the United States where Anna said they were taking care of Steve. In December 2019, Susan had a breakdown. Her mental health was so poor that she had to move in with a friend. Susan started researching other things about Anna's life. When she called Anna's employer, a place she claimed to work for 10 years, they said they had no record of any employee named Anna. Susan researched Stee and saw no birth, death, or marriage records for anyone named Stee Lucas. Anna scammed Susan of 117,000 pounds. In Anna's house, police discovered all of the get well cards and gifts Susan sent to Steve. Anna pleaded guilty to fraud and was sentenced to 28 months in prison plus a 15 year restraining order. Even though justice might be served, Susan struggles to get over her best friend's betrayal. She has trust issues and is afraid to use public transportation. She's still so anxious that she can't work and hopes that her story will warn other potential victims of fraud. Number 1. The Female Tinder Swindler Jocelyn Zakur is an Australian woman who used Tinder to scam her matches out of money to pay back her gambling debts. Zakur was living the high life as a Crown Casino VIP member, but she needed more money to fuel her gambling addiction. 
Sakur took to Tinder to convince her matches to invest in blueberry and tobacco farms in New South Wales. One of the men was a chief executive with money to spare. He gave in to her request as they built a romantic relationship online. He sent $730,000 in 17 installments over five months. He believed his money was going towards seeds, farm worker salaries, and harvests. Instead, it ended up in poker machines at Melbourne's Crown Casino. But he was hesitant when she ran out of that money and asked for more. So she sent him 240 emails in three weeks that threatened his wife, mother, and children. Around the same time, Zakur convinced another financial planner to transfer $61,000 for a fruit and vegetable farm. In June 2018, she persuaded one Tinder match to send her $110,000 and another to send $50,000 on the same day. One of the men contacted the police, discovering that Zakur didn't have a blueberry, tobacco, or fruit and vegetable farm, just a gambling addiction. Zakur pleaded guilty, and a judge sentenced her to four years and eight months behind bars. Zakur appealed to reduce her sentence, arguing that the men knew what they were getting into when they matched with her on Tinder. The judge didn't buy it. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you'd rather do to find a date. Swipe online first and meet up, or try to meet someone in person first.